It's now late August, early September, and we're back in the bee yard. It's time to, to look and harvest your honey. Uh, there are two methods that we can use to separate the bees from their honey. Uh, this is a, a point that it takes a little practice. All of the, the stored honey that the bees have worked so hard at over the last few months are stored in these supers, and you might have several of them stacked up. What you're going to have to do is somehow get the bees away from that honey. The first method is to use a, a, a fume board. So it's a, a, a porous board and it's a commercially available irritant to the bees. It doesn't harm them, it doesn't kill them, it just irritates them. And you lift the cover off, you insert the fume board with some of that irritant dripped onto it. The fumes of that irritant will move down through those frames and those bees that are irritated will drop farther down into the hive. From there, you can remove that hive and you take that into a building or you put it into a, a tough tote, some sealed chamber where the bees can't get to it. Now, the other way to do it is to give them a little bit of smoke so you calm them down. You take that lid off and what I do is I lift and separate this honey super with frames. I tip it up so we're blowing this way and we take our air blower, our leaf blower. I set it up in the yard and I'm blowing against the bottom of these frames and I'm literally moving that air blower up and down the nozzle to blow those bees out of this honey super. I blow them back towards the entrance of the hive and they're gonna to wanna to go back into the hive. Now, not all of the bees are gonna be blown off because some of them can, can hold right tight. What you're gonna to wanna to do then is take out each individual frame and blow that off one at a time. What I normally do is once I have a frame blown off so there's no bees on it, I'll put it down into my tough tote and seal it back up. It only takes a few minutes without the air movement for the bees to go back to that honey and try to reclaim it. The first thing we're gonna do is we have to cut those caps that the bees put on that to, to seal that honey in that comb. We need to cut that off. And, and this unit is gonna separate out the wax from the drippings and, and from the honey. And then what we're gonna do is once we take those caps off with this hot knife, so this is a, a plugged in hot knife, we're then going to use our extractor to spin the honey out of the comb. What we're gonna do is just shear that off. And what this hot knife does is, as you start up here, you just go nice and slow down through it. And what it's gonna do is, it's gonna cut those tops of the honey off. And I'm taking off quite a bit down below, but they're gonna put that back next year. And you can see what I'm doing on this first pass. I'm just getting what I can off of it. And you know, take your time, go fairly slow, try to get as much of the cap off in the first pass, because your knives are gonna cool down. And uh, so what we're doing, we're just cutting all the way down through. Then we're gonna come back through, and we're just gonna try to, to carefully, with that pointed edge, run along the wood, and we're just gonna try to pull that up. And we're trying to try to get more of that cap off. Again, the more I get off here, the cleaner the honey will be when it goes through our filter process. That's what this little unit is for. You just put those caps down in there. But I'm going to take our scratcher. This is a stainless steel, very sharp pointed scratcher. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to get those few that I wasn't able to get with the hot knife. I'm just going to open them up so the honey will flow out. And this was a really nice amber honey. Smells great already. This is a food product and you, you really want to use food grade material, material that's designed for honey or for food. Um, so, you know, don't just go get any old five gallon pail. These are all 
What you're going to see today is all food grade uh, pails that you can get from commercial bee suppliers. So you can see this is a six frame radial spinner. And so as this centrifuge turns around and around and around, the honey is going to be forced outward. The frames will stay in place. The honey gets spun out. It hits the sidewalls and drops down. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that all our tie downs are secure. Uh, you can see that I've added an extra ratchet strap beyond the chains that hold this down. Uh, part of that is just another safety measure that I like to go through. This is bolted to a 4x4 sheet of plywood and we're going to see how that spins. I want to go fairly slow. You can see that it has already started to drip down. What's going to happen is it's going to flow down the sides, go to the honey gate and off and spinning we are. So what we want to periodically do is look how it's, how it's doing. So I'm going to pull this frame out and you'll get a feel for just how heavy it is. You know, there's still quite a bit of honey in this one and, uh, but you can see it is beginning to extract out and it's spinning down and against itself. So we're going to put this back in. We're going to bring her back up to speed and we're going to see uh, if we can't get more of that honey out of there. So your bees are installed, now you have to feed them. You're going to take your hive entrance feeder, you're going to add a quart to that feeder, and those bees every day will need to be fed one quart of sugar water, which is a one to one ratio of sugar to water. So be prepared, those bees need that early on in the life cycle of this new hive. If you do that at the end of, end of day one, 